Welcome to the Arabesque Scissors YouTube channel. I'm Ali Phillips and in part two of this series all about piping, we're going to take the piping that we made in part one and I'm going to show you how to sew it into a project and I'm going to show you how to turn a curve, how to turn a corner and also how to taper your piping when you come to a junction so that you don't have any extra bulk in the seam that you don't need. Now if you love educational sewing videos that help you grow your sewing skills and help you level up each project so it's better than the one before, please consider giving this video a like and hitting that subscribe button. So now we're going to take this really pretty piping that we made in part one and you can see just how perfectly you can match this to your project. You'd be really hard pressed to be able to find uh, pre-made piping that uh, is this pretty. Now I'm going to show you three skills today uh, for how to use your piping in a project. So the first one is how to turn a corner. The next one is how to turn a curve. And the last one is how to taper your piping out of the seam as you come to um, the top edge of a junction so that you don't have the extra bulk of the piping when you want to turn over a hem. And it's very useful to be able to keep that piping out of the very top edge of the seam. So I'll show you the cool trick to be able to make that disappear out of the edge of the seam so there's no extra bulk there when you come to the top. Now my secret weapon for installing piping is to glue baste it in place rather than using pins or clips. And I like to use my fine line glue tip for this. So beginning on the right hand side I'm going to run a really thin bead of glue very close to this raw edge, making sure I'm within the seam allowance. I'm going to stop about a half an inch away from that top edge. Then I'm going to take the raw edge of the piping here. And I'm going to lay that down, lining it up with the raw edge of the fabric that's underneath here. And I'm leaving about a half an inch piping overhanging at the top edge here. So once again you're lining up the raw edge of the piping with the raw edge of the fabric. Now as you come up to the corner here you're just going to grab your scissors and you're just going to clip into the piping at a right angle making sure not to clip all the way into those stitches at a 3 8 inch distance away from the bottom edge of the fabric. So the clip that we've just made is going to enable the piping to change direction and open up so that you can turn the corner nicely and have the piping follow you around. So now you can continue with the glue basting very close to the edge of the seam there and just turn that corner, line those raw edges of the piping up with the raw edges of the fabric. Now you can see here that we're going to be approaching the curve and we're going to have the same problem where we need the piping to sit flat but it's not going to want to bend around that curve. So you're just going to want to clip into the edge of the piping at right angles making sure not to go all the way to the stitching line. Just probably about four or five clips uh, that are going to span the width of that curve and now you can see that that's going to open out and spread out very nicely and sit nice and flat against the fabric there. So just let all those little clips that you've made open out nicely and let that expand and nicely fill that curve so that it's beautifully flat. So just grab your glue and continue with your glue basting. And it looks like I'm having a little bit of a glue malfunction. I will just go and wash my hands. Okay so I'm all cleaned up so you're just going to continue with the line of glue up this last edge and you're just going to stop about half an inch away from that top edge. So just press that uh, piping edge into place all the way up to the top and when you get to the top edge you're just going to trim that off about half an inch longer than the top edge. Now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch right on top of that first line of stitching. When we get to the corner we're going to stop with the needle down and turn the corner 
and then continue going around on top of that first line of stitching. So make sure that you really are following on top of that first line of stitching and this is why having that seam allowance at the correct width is so important because the width of this line of stitching is going to be your seam allowance so if it's too wide or too narrow it's going to mean that your piping's not nicely sewn into the seam. So now I'm at the sewing machine and I'm just going to place a mark about half an inch down from the top edge of the fabric here and another one about half an inch away from the top edge on the other side. Now when I start stitching I'm going to make sure that my needle enters exactly on the mark that I've made and I'm going to stitch a few stitches forward and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to pull this piping out at right angles so it's exiting the seam and then I'm going to back stitch right over the top of the piping to anchor it so that you can see it's pulling out of the seam. And that's how you make the piping disappear into a seam and also reduce the bulk as you come to the top edge of the fabric. Now as I start I like to hand crank my needle so that I can make sure it lands exactly on that mark that I've made and also exactly on top of that first row of stitches that I've got there. And then you can lower your presser foot and then we're going to sit, sew a few stitches forward and then I'm going to pull that piping out at a right angle so it's exiting the seam and then I'm going to back stitch right over the top of that piping to anchor it out of the way. So now you can continue to sew forward and you're just going to follow exactly on that first line of stitching that's already on the piping cord. So I'm still using my fingers just in front of the foot here just to make sure that I'm pushing that piping cord back in under the foot and making sure that the pressure of the foot going along is not pushing that out of the way of the seam. So as you come up to the corner just slow down because you want to try and make your needle stop exactly right on that corner edge. And I've gone just a little bit too far so I'm going to back stitch and then I'm just going to slowly turn the corner and it might take you a couple of stitches to get around the corner. So just keep continuing following on top of that first line of stitching and as you come up to the curve just make sure that you're not catching any of those little snips that you've made um, in the edge of the piping. So just keep stopping and adjusting your presser foot as you go around the curve and this will just help keep everything nice and smooth. So don't be afraid to just go really slowly and keep lifting and adjusting and changing the orientation of your fabric to stop it pulling. And then you can just sew your way down the last side. Now as we come to that last edge, we're going to stop on that mark that we've made and pull that piping outside the seam so it's out at a right angles and then we're just going to sew forward right across the top of it and then don't forget to back stitch so now we've got these two edges of piping that are tapering nicely out of the seam and when we turn that under you can see that that's disappearing inside the seam and it won't be getting in the way of that top edge when we want to turn under that hem at the top. So now you can just trim off those protruding edges of the uh, piping uh, level with the edge of the fabric there. So now you're just going to take your second piece of fabric and lay it on top of the other one, right sides together. And now we're just going to clip these uh, raw edges together 
So just work your way around, making sure you're aligning those raw edges uh, nicely together. So now we're ready to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to start stitching right from the very top edge at the same seam allowance as the rest of the uh, piping is. So we're going to start at the top edge and then join up with that first line of stitching and we're going to stitch right on top of that first line of stitching and follow that all the way around. So I've got my handy stiletto tool here which is really great for getting in close under the needle and just make sure that your needle is starting exactly on top of that line of stitching. And I'm still using my fingers as a bit of a guide here so I can feel the piping underneath that fabric with my fingers and I'm just pushing that slightly up against that foot there just to make sure that I'm getting my stitches um, nice and closely exactly where I want them to go on top of that first line of stitching. You just use that stiletto to keep pushing those layers together. Now as we approach the corner I'm just going to slow down and make sure that I'm going to get my needle to stop exactly where I want it and just follow that uh, corner around and then you can just keep uh, stitching down the last line of the side. And as you approach the end, you're just going to slow down and stitch right over that piping that you've got underneath and right off the end and then backstitch to lock everything in place. So now we're going to turn our work round to the right side and this is where you get a chance to inspect what you've done and see how nicely you've caught your piping in the seam. So just push the corner out and all the seams and pull it into shape and you can see that that's already looking really really cute. So if you're feeling like you haven't quite got as close as you'd like to get to some of these sections, so I can see a little piece here where I can just see a little bit of that stitching line on my piping, then you're just going to turn that background to the other side and you do get a second chance here, you can stitch right up on top of that line of stitching and make sure that you're stitching slightly closer to the edge of the piping there. So use that line as a guide and actually stitch even closer. And you'll find that that is the little secret to uh, getting everything nice and snug. So you can just go back and do any little touch ups that you need to along here if you're not quite happy with how snugly you've got this. So you just trim your corner off here to reduce the bulk. I'm just going to turn this back around to the right side and I'm going to take it to the ironing board and give it a good press. So here's the project all nicely pressed and you can see what a sweet little project this is with uh, the piping really finishing this off and just taking it to the next level. So I really hope that this inspires you with some confidence to go and give piping a try and that you can turn some corners and try some curves and even try tapering your piping into the seams so that you can reduce the bulk when you come to a junction. <laughs>